I'm Tom. I'm Nathan. And this is Steel Valley Sportsman. So the first method we're going to talk about today is the climbing tree stand. A climbing tree stand is basically two pieces. You have your seat and your platform. And essentially the way they all work is the same. You move the seat up and then you lift your legs to pull the platform up to you. Okay. You have several options. You can go with something like this, which is a lone wolf, which is about as good as it gets as far as ultralight goes, but you sacrifice comfort. Or you can go with something extremely comfortable like a summit, but you're going to add a little bit of weight. The other thing too is the better quality stand you go with, the quieter it'll be. The other thing that you're always going to need is a safety harness and your lineman's belt. Especially for climbing a tree with a climber, you're going to need a lineman's belt just because you don't want to fall out of the tree. It's one of the negatives to a climber is they can be extremely safe. But if you talk to anyone who's been using a climber for years and years and years, they all have horror stories. Accidents can happen with this. So don't run for the Darwin Award and get naturally selected. Use a safety harness. Use a tether. Be safe out there. Some of the benefits to a climber is they've been around forever. You can go into any sporting goods store and find some sort of climber. They are relatively easy to use and uh, easy to get the hang of. You're still gonna need a few practice runs, getting up and down, and there's fewer moving parts. You have a lot of potential for noise and setup, especially because you do have two parts. You can hit off of each other, so you have to be mindful of that. And you do have a lot of potential noise going up and down the tree. The majority of people that I talk to who use a climber claim, oh, it's the quietest thing in the world. But if you set them up 100 yards from someone else going up the tree, suddenly they realize you can make a ton of noise with these. So you have to take your time. You have to be patient going up and down. One of the other benefits is you have unlimited height. If you have to be high for some reason, this is the way to do it. You can get higher with less gear with a climber than you can any other method we're going to talk about today. The negatives. Well, we talked about some of them, the potential for noise. The other negative is you really are limited in flexibility. You have to find a tree that has no limbs, no branches, straight up and down, and you're limited as to how high you can go based on when you get into those limbs and branches straight up and down. And it's also a negative if you're trying to hunt a certain buck or a certain bedding area, and you want to hunt the trail 10 yards off of it, and you end up have to go 40 yards off of it because that's the only tree you can get in. It's absolutely the case. If you're a bow hunter, this can really hinder you, especially where me and him are from, where our tree selection can be greatly different from spot to spot to spot to spot to spot. Yeah. If you live in the southeast where there's a lot of tall pines, the climber is king. So the key points here is a lack of flexibility. They are very lightweight. Um, they can be very safe. You just have to take precautions. And I... I would say this is kind of our, our bottom tier of what we're going to talk about today, uh, mostly because of flexibility. But to be a mobile hunter, you need to be flexible. Alright, right, the second method we're going to talk about is one of my favorites, and it's the hang and hunt method. And what you're going to do is you're going to use a lightweight lock on stand and a set of climbing sticks or some kind of step to go up the tree and down the tree every time you hunt. This is a method I've been using for years now, and this is his stand, his sticks. This is what he's going to use this year to hunt with. You want to go ahead and tell him about it? Yeah, I got the Muddy Outfitter hanging on stand, and I'm going to be using the Muddy Pro sticks. Uh, I love these sticks. There's not a stick out there that you can put on a tree faster than these. And they're lightweight. They pack up good. I mean, they're just a great stick. And for the stand, I love this. You can almost get it in any tree. I mean, you can see how small diameter this tree is, and you can hunt out of this no problem. Uh, if you have a crooked tree, you can level it out however you want it. It moves. So if you got a tree leaning this way or leaning the other way, vice versa, you can put it wherever you want it, and that's really nice. Same with the seat. It's got a leveling screw. Uh, it's great. Uh, you have... But the Hawk Helium. I use the Hawk Helium, and I also have been using Muddy Pros for. I bought Muddy Pros when they first came out. You know what? Six, seven years. Ago, six, probably. seven years ago. Uh, it is a great method, and then the Hawk Helium is a nice. I got one of the, the Gen One Hawks when they first came out, um, and that's a, a 
good point. Nowadays, you can go to any store and get a setup like this. Any any big box store, Cabela's, Bass Pro, things like that. Um, they weren't always that available. Yeah, whether it's XOP, Lone Wolf, Muddy, Millennium, there's great options. Great options nowadays. And there's a lot of options in climbing sticks. There's a lot of options in these, these steps. Um, so you can be really flexible in your setup. You can really tailor it to the way you want to hunt. And I think that's the big key to this is its flexibility. You can be in any tree. Like he mentioned, crooked trees, if there's limbs on it, you can hunt anywhere, anytime. Um, you can see this is a pretty small diameter tree. It fits in there, no problem. You can go much larger than this. I've been in small trees. I'm, I'm a big guy, I'm six foot 230, and I've hung these stands in small, tiny little trees in the middle of clear cuts. Whatever it takes to get a buck, these can get you there. Um, Especially, like I said earlier, your doubt to a climber is your tree hunting. And if you're trying to hunt a trail or a certain area for a deer, you almost have to hope there's a tree there that's going to fit on it. Yeah. This you can get in any tree. Yeah. There's almost, unless it's six foot around diameter, you can get in any tree in the woods with this. Yeah. And uh, the other big benefit to it is with a climber, when you're up the tree, if you have to come down, the whole stand comes down. With this, if you're up the tree and you drop something, you can just shimmy back down the ladder. If you find a spot that you really like, it's a good rut funnel and you want to sit there the next day, you can just leave the tree, pull your bottom two sticks with you when you go, come back, throw your bottom two sticks in, and you're hung and you're set up. Um, with this kind of setup, you're going to obviously have your stand. You're going to have some kind of climbing method to go with it. Um, you're going to still, once again, you're going to need a harness. You're going to need a lineman's belt, and you're going to need a second one to act as a tree tether to tether you in for safety when you're up. Um, the other thing you should add to any one of these stands, they all come with kind of a cheaper backpack strap on them. I would get like a military surplus molly pack. It puts a hip belt on it, so it moves some of that weight from your shoulders to your hips and makes makes it a much easier carry too. Yeah, if you're worried about like these, they're blowing around, doing whatever, you can always use bungee cords. Yeah bungee everything up um i'm gonna get rid of these straps this year and probably go to the molly method just because we're hiking two three miles back in on some pieces of public yep. it's you're gonna need the comfort yep and, and flexibility really is the key here uh as far as downsides your biggest downside is cost you know the cost of your climbing method cost of your tree stand it can start to get high quickly um yep. the other downside is there's a little bit more of a learning curve i think for these stands than there is for a climber um can you think of anything else besides that weight I, yeah you can add some weight and i mean i tried going lightweight uh these are pretty light i'm probably right around between 20 and 25 pounds on my pack and i mean that doesn't bother me i'm not like huge on all right this is a pound lighter i can't i'll go that way if it's comfortable and it's what you like run with it i mean it doesn't bother me carrying another pound in or another couple of pounds. Everything's a trade-off. Lightweight is great, but it has disadvantages too. Generally speaking, the lighter weight you go, the more you start to sacrifice comfort and the more money you're going to spend when it comes to mobile hunting. So do you have to spend top dollar to get the lightest method? Well, no, you don't. And then for a lot of people, that's not the way they want to go. Some people would rather spend a little bit less, get a little bit more comfort and just truck that extra weight in the woods it's not as big a deal to them right. some people want to shave every ounce so it's what you want to do this i mean this setup was probably right around 300 dollars i mean yeah it's kind of expensive because but if you're mobile hunting it's kind of what you need i mean yeah. and realistically if you wanted to go cheap you could get you know i did the primal steps in another video you can go get a, an excessively cheap much heavier tree stand and really put the effort into quieting it down um i mean even if you really wanted to go cheap i mean walmart sells some lock-ons that if you change the straps out and the way it locks on the tree it's just as good as any of these it's i mean your platform is going to be a lot smaller yep. it's still going to be lightweight but it's just that's the comfort we're talking about i mean yep. and it's again it's that's the beauty of it is this is a very flexible method uh the other downside is you don't have the limit limitless height like you do with a climbing tree stand. If you're in a situation where you're in hill country or you're in the south and you're always hunting high, 
you can use some aiders with this and to get more height but generally speaking your climber might be your better method there um, or you're carrying a bunch of sticks which is a lot more weight which is a lot more cost so there's that downside is your potential height but again you can remedy that it's all on what you want to do I think the flexibility outweighs the downside there big oh, time. Yeah. Big and time. especially with these four sticks and his single movable aider you can get what 20 25 foot up probably I, I would say probably 25 to 30 it really? just depends on how tall you are and how much you can stretch how much clothing you have on yeah um so realistically there there are circumstances where i've hunted pretty high again hill country um ravines things oh, like yeah. that if i've been down in draws or something like that and you got the deer walking eye level with you it's... yeah but you're 30 foot up in a tree and it's just that's the way it goes for the most part 20 foot is about as high as i go and a lot of times i'm hunting eight feet off the ground there have been times where i've hung a tree stand this high and those sticks just hopped into it because it puts me just above the brush that i can actually shoot so like a lot of the woods we hunt are like this open hardwoods and some thick stuff so i mean our canopy is pretty good that you don't need to go over 20 foot and yeah. you're going to be concealed yeah absolutely it's all about context where do you live where are you hunting what is that like and where do you want to hunt if you're going to make a big investment for a lot of people they're only going to be able to invest in one system but you plan on traveling to hunt you may want to go with this method over a climber yeah like I know people, they got six, seven different stands. How much do they pay for those? Yeah. I have just one stand and I can go everywhere they go. Just pack it in, pack it out. You get good with this, you can hang the stand and tear it down in 10 minutes. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, it's it's that flexibility thing. You can hang it and tear it down or you can hang it and leave it. It's whatever the situation, that's that's really where this is Yeah, like I'm sure this year if we get on deer, I mean, we might be right back in there and the next day we could either leave the stand there or tear it down move it another 30 yards wherever we need to and and a lot of times that movement a lot of people when i say stuff like that they're like well why don't you just hang a permanent stand there because oftentimes you're if you're coming back to an area it means you didn't kill the deer so something wasn't right so that 20 yard move makes a big difference the buck i shot last year i had a permanent stand in the area i literally hung my hawk less than 20 yards from the stand i could look over at the tree stand but that was what I needed to get the angle to get the shot to kill the deer, period. So, yep. a lot of benefits to this. All, All right, right, so our final mobile method is the tree saddle. And it's been getting a lot of hype lately. It's actually a pretty old method of going about it. But um, this is my first year using it. I'm not extremely qualified to tell you about it. Um, but I've done probably a dozen climbs, and I've shot my bow out of it quite a bit. And I'm really excited about this method. With this, you no longer need your harness. Your saddle replaces your harness. You no longer need a tree stand. You can use a platform or a ring of steps. And then you're still gonna need your climbing method, whichever one you choose, from the hang on set. It's kind of a progression that most guys who do the hang and hunt end up going to the saddle because you really can reduce weight and you can gain a lot of flexibility. So this saddle and this platform replaces my tree stand and my safety harness. These are significantly lighter, obviously, than carrying a tree stand. Um, it's more comfortable than it looks. Everyone always kind of freaks out about that. As you can see, it really just kind of cups my hips very well. Um, and then you can slide back and forth. As far as shooting goes, you actually can shoot 360 around the tree because it's very easy to move around. Now, obviously that's a lot of movement. You would want to do that slowly in the woods. But, um, so you gain a lot of shooting opportunity and you gain a lot of flexibility too in that you start avoiding some of the problems with a lock-on. For instance, if there was a big gnarly knot right here on a lock-on stand, that'd be digging in my back. So I'd probably have to position a stand around that. With the saddle, that knot can stay right there. It's no problem. So you gain a lot of comfort there. Uh, the other big benefit to it is um, the ease of setting up. It's a lot easier just to toss this little platform up than it is to fully hang a stand. It's a lot easier to take that platform off than it is to hang a stand. So there's huge, huge upsides to a tree saddle. Now, the negatives. 
you can't go into any big box store like Cabela's and buy one of these, okay? You can't buy one of these there. Everything's pretty much order online or get it at a trade show. It's got this huge boost in popularity, so you're gonna it's gonna take you a long time to get these, all right? Um, the wait times can be weeks. Like if you're watching this video right now in early September, you probably won't have your saddle for your opener in late September, early October. Um, so it's one of those things where you have to plan ahead. Some of the benefits besides, obviously the hunting benefits, um, is that they're quality products. You don't really have to worry about cheap stuff. The two companies that really make them are Arrow Hunter and Tethered. This is an Arrow Hunter Kestrel Flex. Um, they're top notch, both companies are top notch companies. They do great work. Now, my platform is a Ridge Runner from out on a limb manufacturing, and it's a great platform. You can get a platform from Tethered too. Uh, you can get a platform called Perch to fit these. You have a lot of options there as far as like a ring of steps. Um, if you can screw in, a lot of people just use screw in steps to make a ring around the tree that you can use to maneuver around, but they also have strap on steps like squirrel steps or the bowman steps. So there are a huge number of options, plus you have climbing methods. Um, again, you could use something like a Muddy Pro or a Lone Wolf Stick or a Hawk Helium, or you can use a Wild Edge Step or something like that. So you can really tailor it to exactly what you want to use to hunt. Yeah. Your climbing method's pretty much going to be the same as if you were doing a hanging hunt. Yeah. And if you're doing a hanging hunt right now, and you're looking to transition to a tree saddle, it's a really easy transition, okay? That's it, you need to platform the saddle. Platform the saddle, it's done. If you're going from a climber to a saddle, it can be a little more intimidating because you have to learn your climbing method, then you have to learn how to set up, things like that. There are some excellent resources all over YouTube, all over the internet. Go to the Saddle Hunter Forum, go check out G2 Outdoors or DIY Sportsman. Even the hunting public now are getting into saddle hunting. So there's tons of great information on the nuts and bolts of it all. Yep. The biggest benefits, again, lightweight, mobility, flexibility. And I think flexibility as far as killing bucks with a bow is your biggest bar oh, none. Yeah, 100%. Bar none. Your downsides is the lack of availability, the cost. You're looking at about two to $300 to get into a saddle. Um, unless you take a DIY option, which you do so at your own risk. Uh, the lack of availability and the wait time with it. Um, there is a little bit of a learning curve, especially if you're going from a climber straight to this. Um, you, you can, you might get tripped up there a little bit, but if you've been doing hang and hunt, it's not a big, big transition. There's endless custom customization here. And that's a big perk. I think that's a huge perk. Oh yeah. Any more. I mean, you can make it exactly how you want it. Or pretty much, you can customize whatever you want. You can find what you're comfortable with, and as long as it's in your price range, you can go as lightweight as you want to go. As um, far as sticks, a lot of people are getting the Hawk Heliums and cutting them down. Yeah. And that's probably, that's going to be your lightest stick yeah. that you can buy. Lightest and cheapest, and you can rope mod them. I like these so much better, but a rope mod on a Versa button is a good second choice. Yeah, or the uh, the tether would just come out. The Versa strap yeah, from Tether strap, or any kind of daisy chain webbing or daisy chain am steel. Yep. It's there's endless options. It's a great time to be a mobile hunter. And um, I think most guys start with a climber. Yeah. I mean, it's just it seems like everyone I talk to, that's how they start. That's how they get in there. And then you probably go to hang on. Yep. And I'm. Like in the saddle method, I haven't tried it yet, but yeah, it seems pretty sweet. I like it. Okay, so just to kind of wrap things up, your primary public land methods is the climbing tree stand, the hang and hunt set, and the saddle set. Any one of those will work. You can you can make any system work for you. You have to figure out what's what's going to be your best option for where you're hunting, how you want to hunt, and basically what your budget is. Okay. Yeah. And if you're rifle hunting and not bow hunting, that flexibility opens up big time, big time. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So if you're, we're, we're mostly talking about bow hunters chasing bucks and where you really have to be precise, you know. Especially on public land. Especially on public land. Even on private land. There's something to be said about the element of surprise, you know. Oh yeah, like 
when I killed my buck two years ago, I ended up killing him 30 yards from a stationary stand. And if I didn't move, I ended up shooting him out of my climber. But if I never moved, I would have never seen that deer. Yeah. And deer have a tendency to pattern hunters too. I, one of my first, I uh, shot a 10 point and I caught him going through a funnel. Well, part of that funnel was a ladder stand that had been there for 15 years that the guy hunted all the time and the deer knew it. So they moved accordingly. I went in with a mobile setup and scored a kill on him because he was going to skirt that stand. It was getting, you know, it created a funnel. So mobility is a huge benefit, whether you're hunting private or public, but it's, it's a must with public. Absolutely yeah. must. I don't know how many times I've been hunting and just does come in and they look right up at that stand to see if they're in there. So they Absolutely. know, I mean, mobile is definitely the way to go because you catch them by surprise. Yep. So, and it's like anything else practice get out in the backyard climb hunt shoot tear it down climb hunt shoot yeah you can't go buy this and say all right i'm gonna go hunt with it tomorrow yeah. it's not gonna work i mean you're gonna be a mess out there you're gonna be making all kinds of noise yeah. um it's just not gonna go well your first climb of the year should be well before your first hunt of the year your first doesn't climb should probably be yeah. well before you're just so and it shouldn't be the same tree you're on different trees so Absolutely. you know how it's gonna be take different shot angles, real world shots, you know, know your limitations ahead of time. Um, and the other thing with it too is repetition. You know, like he said, you don't want to be bumbling around. You got to be quiet when you do this stuff. You got to be quiet. Practice makes perfect. Absolutely. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. We'll do our best to answer them and check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Steel Valley Sportsman. Thanks guys.